Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the planning and zoning meeting for this evening, January the 4th, 2018. Happy New Year. First order of business will be our public hearings, and our first public hearing will be the Morton Common Site Plan-120. Mr. Hamm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. This is a site plan approval request for Warrington Commons SP120, located at 499 East Veterans Memorial Parkway. Property is zoned C3 Highway Commercial. On October 3rd, 2017, a request was filed for site plan approval for commercial development, including a snook store to be located at 499 East Veterans Memorial Parkway. I'd like to ask to make part of the public hearing record the municipal code by reference, the planning and zoning report, public hearing notices, and the Warrington 2016 comprehensive plan. And the applicant is here if you have any specific questions for them. Thank you, Mr. Hamm. And before we start, anyone that would like to speak tonight, make sure you step to the podium and state your name for the record and so the television can hear you, the audience can hear you, make sure you speak clearly into the mic. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak on behalf of the Warrington Commons site plan tonight? My name is uh, Ron Smith, and uh, I've been in this community for over 30 years, uh, local. And uh, excuse my speaking because I'm, I'm labored at uh, breathing. So, um, but with the uh, Snooks Markets uh, and the Desco Group. Uh, I will have to say, I don't think this town realizes the impact of what it's going to have, uh, which is for the better, actually, because um, I've seen snooks go into small towns, and um, when they come to town, other businesses look at that, and they look at, uh, hey, we're open for business, just like snooks, is, our warrant is moving forward. So uh, they attract businesses. and. Um, being coincidence, being an employee of Snooks Markets for over 38 and a half years, I will say, I didn't even know that my calls fall from engineering and his group was even going to be here tonight. I'm here for something else, but um, I worked with Mike and engineering on uh, these stores that they build and their designs and what have you, just on different products. But uh, So I've been, I've participated in that from ground up uh, before the buildings even started which is interesting, and uh, Snooks is a good family, and uh, I think it'd be great for the uh, community. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Smith. Sir? Good evening. Uh, Robert Clark with Armstrong Teasdale here on behalf of uh, the applicant. We do have a brief uh, PowerPoint presentation, I believe, is available. Mm -hmm. Let me introduce the rest of the team who's here this evening. Uh, we have uh, Dave Van Leer from Cochrane Engineering, Mike Allspa, who's an architect with Schnooks, and we have Franklin Sears from the Desco Group. Um, any of whom can answer any questions you all might have. Thank you. Um, briefly, I'll just give a quick overview, and then uh, Dave will talk a little bit about the site plan, and Mike will then talk a little bit about the uh, elevations and the in interior finishes, and then any questions after that, certainly. Um, be or we can do a regular meeting? Yeah, we'll do that in a regular meeting. So. Okay. But we'll go ahead and do this part now, I guess. Okay. Great. So essentially, it's a, as you know, a proposed development at the northwest corner of uh, Highway 47 and Veterans Memorial, 15 acre site. Uh, the proposed site plan is for a 36,000 square foot Schnucks grocery store with a uh, 35,000 square foot additional retail space. Um, again, Got the folks here to uh, answer any questions when we're ready to do the PowerPoint presentation. Thank you. Do the PowerPoint now. That's a cute. She's already got the data. I would think having the PowerPoint would give anybody else that has any questions right. or comments the you know, opportunity to see it. We'll go ahead and play it. Okay. Go ahead and play the PowerPoint and then we'll. Oh, yeah, sir. <coughs> oh, I see. Good evening. Um, I'm David Banner with Cochrane Engineering, also here on behalf of the applicant tonight. Um, as I stated, I'd like to kind of welcome you guys to the site a little bit. Um, here's a very recent uh, aerial photo of the 
property. Um, this the undeveloped area you hear is see in the center of your screen. Um, obviously, this is our site. Um, this here is our phase one site plan um, to help you get oriented a little bit. Um, 70 running east and west across the top of the page, Veterans Memorial, and then this would be Highway 47 over here. We have three access points proposed to the development, two off of Veterans Memorial, and then also an extension of the existing access drive off of Highway 47. Um, signage is proposed in three locations. Um, signage out along 70, signage on veterans, and also signage at our access point on 47. Um, this plan shows the overall scope of the development. Um, you'll see from phase one to phase two, same Schnucks building with, with retail added to the north of Schnucks um, and the associated parking. Um, the plan proposes 165 parking spaces for Schnooks and 142 for the future retail. Uh, both of those meet code requirements. Um, generally speaking, stormwater from the parking lot drains in this direction to a detention basin, and stormwater from the buildings drains to a second detention basin, um, generally maintaining the existing drainage patterns of the property. I guess one of the things I'd have to say is um, the photometrics, uh, lighting plan, and the landscaping plan um, also were submitted and complied with city code. Thank you. Hi, good evening. My name is Mike Alspine with uh, Shook's corporate office in the engineering department. So I'm very excited to present to you guys tonight a sneak peek of what the exterior of elevation looks like of the new building. And also to show you uh, a little presentation and a few snapshots of, of what the inside is going to look like as well. Um, just to give you a little flavor. It's we're very excited about it. So if everybody can see around me here or not. But hey, we got in front of us as well. Okay, oh, good. Excellent. Um, so what we got right here is, is um, the east elevation of our store. Uh, we're focusing, you know, the main key element with a, a high gable parapet in the front so we can do our signage band, Schnucks Fresh Foods. Um, we're also proposing, you know, a lot of clear story windows across the front because we want to try to get that natural light into the facility uh, with uh, exterior signage, you know, uh, uh, stating uh, some of our products, you know, seafood, uh, meat, deli, um, bakery, produce, wine, and spirits on the front. We've got one main center entrance right here uh, with the canopy over the entrance, and uh, the windows on the right side are actually an a indoor seating area, cafe, uh, for the food offerings that we've got, and that's, that's our front elevation. Um, the, the entire front will be lined with um, uh, a stone veneer, to give it uh, a little more upscale look in the front. So that's the east elevation. Um, the elevation from um, Met Veterans Memorial Parkway, um, which is the south elevation, will also have a series of windows across the side of it to get that natural light into the, into the store. Um, and, and also proposing an, another uh, sign on that south elevation uh, facing Veterans Memorial. So that's the look and the colorations of the store that, that's, that we have proposed uh, for the site. Really excited to show you next uh, kind of a, a preview of what the store is going to look like on the inside. So what we're looking at right here is, is a bird's eye view uh, of the inside of the store. Uh, right here is the entrance, single entrance and exit into the store. And uh, our conceptual layout, we want to, um, our goal is really to focus on fresh. So um, the entire right side of the store is our fresh offerings that we want to um, walk right into the store, right in, into our produce department or our floral department. Uh, and so that's what you see here is all fresh flo um, floral here and produce right here. Um, and then as you walk around the store, we've got bakery in the front right corner, uh, followed by um, deli, prepared food offerings on this front wall here. Going around to the back rear corner, we've got um, service 
of seafood and service meat, followed by fresh meat, um, going on into the dairy department through the uh, rear of the store, and then followed by uh, our, our, our frozen food department in the front left corner as a, as a separate department. Um, and obviously then center store grocery right in the middle. So this is kind of give you a snapshot of, of what the store will look like as, as you enter. This is right as you enter the front door with a, a floral department. Um, these are all the tables and bins uh, for the uh, fresh produce department. Um, and then as you go, if you turn to the right along this front wall, oops, sorry. along this front wall, we've got a grab and go section followed by a um, self-service bakery in the corner. We will be baking fresh in store um, with ovens and so forth. Hot to go. Uh, we've got uh, rotisserie chickens, you know, hot wing bars, uh, you know, uh, fried chicken offerings like that, falling into prepared foods and, and into a service deli. There's also a cheese department. These are just some, showing you some of the graphics that we're using now in our stores to give you the, the feel of what, what the interior will, will look like. This is looking back as you enter into the store, looking back towards the storefront. There will be a cafe area which is projected off the front of the store where we can have um, indoor dining um, for any of the offerings that we are, we've got in, in the store here. As you uh, continue through the back of the store, the back right hand corner, we've got a service meat and seafood department. Okay, side by side, open into the open prep space so you can see, you know, um, the production of meat and seafood in this corner. Uh, as you go to the, to the left, then we do have the um, fresh meat department along the rear of the store. As you continue down that back aisle, you can just see um, these are gondolas for uh, center store grocery product, followed into the back corner of the dairy, um, cheese offerings, frozen food into the front left corner of, of the uh, retail facility. Ending up at, at, as you make, make your way through the store, this is what we're, we're proposing it look like at, at our checkout area as well. Thank you for shopping with us. Mm -hmm. Again, the front wall grab and go, some kind of offerings like you know sandwiches, salads, beverages, you know, right as you enter into the store, so you don't have too far to go. And that gives you a quick overview of of what we're proposing for warranty. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. and, and I'll just wrap up briefly by saying that the uh, hours of operation are. 6 a.m. to midnight, and uh, Schnucks is anticipating 15 to 20 full-time and 40 to 50 part-time employees, of which they estimate about three-quarters of those will be new hires. So with that, we'll let that finish up public here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice, very nice presentation. Anybody in the public would like to speak at this time? Step to the podium, sir. <coughs> My uh, name is Scott Schoenfeld. Uh, just for the board's reference, uh, I am not a resident of the city. I am a former resident of the city and a former member of the board. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know that maybe my comments aren't necessarily helpful to the board. Uh, but I do think that this is a uh, positive development for the community and for the city and for the county. I think that projects like this are important to the city and county governments. They will help us uh, capture revenue that right now is probably going to St. Charles County uh, and Wentzville specifically. I think that probably these gentlemen here from Schnucks uh, know what kind of revenue is coming out of this community and into Wentzville and I'm sure they factored that into their decision to uh, open a business here. Uh, I'm not in, in business, so I don't know, but that's my guess. Um, and I would like to take an opportunity to compliment the city and the boards and the employees of the city. Uh, you know, I don't know if this development was organic or something that the city had a role in 
uh, cultivating, but I think that it shows uh, some real positive signs of growth and development in Warrington. I know that not everybody in the community is excited about that, but I think that it's necessary. Um, growth is going to happen, and I think it's important that we nurture uh, positive opportunities like this. Um, I think that it'll help make our community stronger in the long run. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Anyone else tonight? Hearing none, we'll close our public hearing for North of Commons and open up the public hearings for the Extreme Team Real Estate <coughs> Group Site Plan 121. This is a site plan approval request for the Extreme Team Real Estate Group SP 121 to be located at 910 Highway 47. Property is zone C2 General Commercial. On November 30th, 2017, a request was filed for site plan approval to allow a habitat management business, retail sales, and a real estate office to be located at 910 Highway 47. I'd like to ask to make part of the public hearing record, the municipal code by reference, my planning zoning report, the public hearing notices, and the warrant in 2016 comprehensive plan. And the applicant is here if you have any specific questions. Thank you, Mr. Hamp. Anyone else want to speak on behalf of that site plan tonight? Hearing none, we'll close that public hearing and open up the Extreme Team Real Estate Group Conditional Use Permit Dash 56. This is a conditional use permit approval request for the Extreme Team Real Estate Group CUP Dash 56, located at 910 Highway 47. Property is owned C2 General Commercial. On November 30th, 2017, a request was filed for a conditional use permit approval to allow a habitat management business, retail sales, and real, real estate office be located at 910 Highway 47. Per Appendix A, 3G14, the conditional use permit is required. The conditional use permit approval request has been submitted by the applicant along with the site plan, SP121 approval request as required per Section 405.286C. And the reason for the conditional use permit is because of the sale and fertilizer is what required the conditional use. And once again, the applicants here, if you have any specific questions. Thank you, Mr. Young. I'd like to make part of the public hearing reference the municipal code by reference, my planning and zoning report, and the public hearing notices. Thank you. Thank Anyone you. else want to speak on behalf of that tonight? Gary Nunn will close our public hearings for this evening and open up our regular plan and zoning. Meeting. The first order of business will be our minutes from the December 7th meeting. Motion to approve the minutes as submitted for the December 7th meeting. I second. I have a motion by Mr. Costello, second by Mr. Gerloff to approve the minutes from the December 7th meeting as submitted. Any questions? <coughs> Roll call vote. Mr. Costello? Yes. Mr. Deach? Yes. Mr. Cullum? Yes. Mrs. Scott? Yes. Mr. Barton? I abstain. I was absent. Mr. Durbin? Yes. Mr. Gerloff? Yes. Mrs. Blondin? I'll abstain. Mr. Cooper? Yes. And Mr. Priest is absent. Motion passes 7 0 with two abstentions and one absent. Next order of business will be the Warranted Commons Site Plan 120. The floor to any questions that anyone might have. I was noticing on your elevation that you uh, specified the vertical panel on the exterior, on the front and the side. Is that a hidden fastener panel, metal panel? Thank you, sir. Um, no, I believe it. Um, the the detail that, that we're specifying is 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 not a hidden fastener on on that um, engineered building. Okay. That would be. I don't like the looks of the sheet metal siding and yeah. the hidden fastener yeah, system. A fastener that matches the background of the panel system. Uh, do, you have a pro, do you have a profile of what the metal looks like or 
I don't, not with me. There, it's, it's like a rib panel. Every 12 inches, there's right. ribs. Yeah. I would like consideration to use a hidden fastener to where it's a smooth. Um, I know it comes, you can get it very expensive where it's insulated, or you can get it to where it's just a metal 12 inch panel. So it's all hidden fastener, so it just gives you a smooth skin on the exterior mm -hmm. versus the ribs and all of the, the hidden the screws showing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll, I'll pass that along. I have while you're up there, I have a question yeah. on sidewalks. I know the ordinance does not require sidewalks on driveways, um, and I don't see them on the plan. Was any consideration given to that? There's, where specifically are you asking, Teresa? They're, they're existing along Veterans Memorial. Yeah, I'm thinking of another situation where we, that we have where there's a road that goes into a uh, commercial area and there are people walking down the road and going down the road in their wheelchairs and people driving and there's no sidewalk and I think maybe the city missed missed the mark by not getting them put in there and I just felt like the question the, there's, be there's a sidewalk shown from Veterans Memorial up to the building from Veterans Memorial mm -hmm. yes Correct. on the first drive lane coming in there's a uh, five foot wide sidewalk shown I going up to the corner of the building the, okay wait a minute Right there. Okay. And that's okay. So there's a sidewalk there. And then and the other one is probably going to be more of an access for deliveries, you think? So and then what about the one coming off of 47? We currently do not show a sidewalk there. Um, there's no sidewalk along the existing drive. Um, and we just we continue the same road section that we already have. I just like to voice concern <laughs> concern about that because we I think if, if somebody's in a wheelchair or walking, they're not gonna come and they're on forty seven, they're not gonna come all the way around to where the the other entrance is to to access that and it's it's a concern in another area of town so that's that's my concern and, and the hatched area I'm sure you're you're aware of, but that's existing payment that was put in I believe when they did AutoZone yeah I yeah I was aware of that so these are very difficult to read when we get them on these little computers yes. and, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to tell there's a sidewalk there or not so but Anyone else have any questions tonight? I've got one uh, about uh, a lot of your schnooks have got a lot of brick in the front one, and I was surprised and kind of disappointed that I didn't see a lot of brick in the front facade. <coughs> brick or stone work. <coughs> and I was a little disappointed with that, but of a comment, I guess. I'm going to say, going with Mike's comment, on other site plans that have come in, we have required for like uh, Dollar General to be more of a brick. The precedence has kind of been set for that area to do a little bit nicer building and to come in with a Especially with the sheet metal siding, that's about as inexpensive as you can put on the side of a building. Yeah. And I would really like to see something a little nicer on the areas that are that's going to be viewed from veterans in 47. And I understand on the side where the retail will go in later, use a cheaper pro product for the simple reason it would be covered up at a later date. Questions or comments? Okay, motion. 
I would make a motion to approve the site plan with consideration given to the uh, siting material and consideration given to a sidewalk on the part that they can do coming off of uh, 47 uh, prior to the board meeting. When you say consideration, do you want to specifically indicate what what we want to accept or not? Okay. Um, I would suggest whatever he said on the flat riveted. Well, you can do a hidden fastener system, uh, okay. which it's you can get it embossed. It's a uh, it's more expensive than the other metal, but it does give a lot nicer finish than what the metal will do. And if out of, out of the generosity of your heart, if you want to do it all out of brick with some nice, you know, soldier courses going through it, we'd really appreciate that too. Yeah, what we're showing on the elevation, like we were saying, is, is, is the stone work going up three to four feet across the entire Correct. bottom. And, and then another panel for our signage band above. Um, so that stone work is, is up so high across the entire front. Correct. And that's what we're showing with the brick metal coming down to it. Right. Um, but not higher at this point. Okay. okay, so the specifics being the hidden fastener metal and a sidewalk uh, right. where they, I know they can't do anything with the road that's existing, but the part that they're adding. And then maybe the city in the future can look at doing something with the part that's existing. <coughs> well, part of that. Part of the problem there isn't that doesn't that butt up against Taco Bell there? Yes. That road? It's between Taco it's Bell. Between yeah. ta it, I think Taco it's all Bell and Walgreens. I don't know that they can really do anything That's there. What I mean. But where this we can do something, <coughs> we should do something. We should do something. Mrs. Scott's got a motion on the floor to accept the site plan with some consideration for better siding and sidewalk. Do we want to make that a consideration or a requirement? Requirement. A requirement. Let's make it a requirement. Yeah. I second the motion. Do they have any questions or comments? <laughs> they didn't quite tonight, are they? <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Roll call vote. Mr. Deach? Yes. Mr. Cullum? Yes. Mrs. Scott? Yes. Mr. Barton? Yes. Mr. Durbin? Yes. Mr. Gerloff? Yes. Mrs. Blondin? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Costello? Yes. Motion passes down to zero with one absence. That'll come in front of the board on what day? 16th. 16th, I believe. Thank yes. you for your presentation. Tuesday, the 16th. Appreciate your help. Look forward to seeing Schnooks and Mort. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. That's awesome. Thank you. We'll move on to our next order of business. will be the Extreme Team Real Estate Group site plan. And I'd like to point out that of the list of items on my December 28th, 2017 plan review letter, uh, Mr. Persiker did drop off a uh, photometric plan to me right before the meeting. Okay. There so was, landscaping was also mentioned. So number one, I haven't had a chance to look at it, but he did supply that this evening. Okay. Oh, for number one there? Yes. Yes, he um, the list that that I saw that you all pro that the city provided where they checked against that also had um, that they wanted landscaping updated and then there was a stormwater issue and then a parking space issue yeah. has all of the have all of those things been resolved no the plan review letter dated the 28th 
nothing has been changed except for he submitted the photometric plan this evening. Okay, and since I always ask the sidewalk question, and I still have trouble seeing this, it, is there an existing sidewalk on this? I believe yes, out along 47 there is. Okay, yes. so the sidewalk exists, the so it wouldn't need to be on the plan. Side then. It's drawn on the side plan. It is drawn on the side plan. Yeah. I, I really can't see these things. You blow them up and then you just get picked. And I, I can't tell anything. Mm -hmm. It's a little so. Okay, so sidewalk's not a concern. So, but landscaping and um, the stormwater and the parking, then is still, was that still the issues that haven't met city code? Yeah. Number two through five B is still not addressed okay. from my December 28th plan review letter. They did submit a plan for number one. Okay. And they're here to speak, Jeff and Rachel. <laughs> Go ahead, step up. State your name, folks. I'm Jeff Barsinger. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I guess, which questions do you have for us? Just got to do. Well, I'm just going, I'm just looking at the letter that the that the city sent and it says please update the landscape plan to include well north and north point and scale to include the size and surface of the materials of the parking area proposed landscape materials uh, location of hose connections to water sources the trees the parking lot trees all the requirements okay um, <coughs> the landscaping is currently being worked on to update it you know I got this on the 28th so I was trying to rush to get everybody done but they couldn't get it done okay. <laughs> um, too many holidays so all that is being updated uh, the hose bibs we don't even have the plumbing laid out yet I could guess where I'd want hose bibs um, I just don't exactly know they're there uh, landscaper is also going to be working with Metro Lawn to lay out the proposed sprinklers watering system for the plants but as far as the trees the landscaping I would imagine he can have that done for me in a week some of it will depend on when the library gets I'm sorry that's just for TV purposes. Yeah. Thank you, this Rachel Bersicker. Um, some of it's going to depend on when the library is done, where they're, how all that falls out too. I don't. We don't want to put trees on top of trees or anything like that. So some of the landscaping is a little bit dependent on how their construction is going to finish and what's going to visually lay out nice as well. So um, the trees aren't on there and things like that. But the building is proposed. I mean, that's what we're proposing. Something similar. To, we're not sure that that's a exactly the size it's going to be and we're waiting for the, the library to kind of finish up to see what their landscaping is going to look like so we can kind of make it cohesive okay and then on this it also uh, says the stormwater management mm -hmm. plan the engineer can have that done as far as the MoDOT approval I gotta put that in um, but he was backed up to fix the tie-in where it's at on the site plan he messed that up but he called me he's like i can get it done and, you know, but i just don't have time um, you know i would imagine by the time board meeting all of them we can have that part fixed i don't think we'll have the modot part and answer back from them yet um, but again i thought I'm all new to this, we're both new to this. <laughs> um, I would have figured that would have been some of the stuff we would have gone through once we got to the construction phase and construction site plans. And, and then the other, the, really the other issue is the parking, that it needs 22 spots. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's a lot of parking. The actual <laughs> office area is only 2,250 square feet. Um, the rest of it is just shop space and storage space. In the beginning, I originally thought we could do just cross wall around the office building. So, I mean, the spaces we had there, I would figure for 2,250 square feet would suffice it. I don't see us having a ton of traffic, you know, agents come and go. 
I don't. I, I understand that 22 spots is what fits that building size. Off a of I, I don't understand that. We would ask that maybe we could look at that a little harder because only 2,200 of it is going to be actual working space. The rest of it is storage and, and you know, there's actually not going to be any ins and outs for that. So only 2,200 of it is actual retail and, and office space. So we would ask that maybe the parking spaces could go off of that amount versus the gross square footage of the entire building since it's storage. And I think who figures the parking spaces that are required? It's per our section of code, off-site off level and parking. And, and doesn't that say that depending on the use of the, that if it's a multiple use, it can be, if they can split that out, is that? The 22 is with their specific it's uses. It's with their specific the uses. Building, yeah. Because the other part he's going to be housing his equipment in uh, that he uses when they go do the on-site work, a truck trailer, probably small tractors. Um, they're going to have extra supplies that they use in the field. They'll probably also have, if they have extra stuff that they'll have for their retail. So even though it's not physically where they're going to have customers in there all the time, it's still part of their business plan. Okay, so, so it was... It was figured with the different uses of the spaces. It's in mind. figured for that their use with that size building, yes, ma'am. The building proposed is 5,500 square feet. Less than half of it is actually going to be office space or usable square footage for us to have retail environment and agents coming in and out. I have a question for you. Just what is a habitat <laughs> management? When I think uh, we should when probably I read have started that, with the business models a little <laughs> different than normal. I'm yeah. thinking of wildlife management. Yeah. Yes, forestry. I, I uh, manage people's hunting properties, um, put in their food plots, deer stands, you know, timber stand improvement, run feeders, cameras for them. Basically, anything you think that people do on hunting properties. That's what that habitat management business consists of. Which is why we have the retail sales to back it up a little bit. Well, so I think that in your packet there was some pictures of some of the different like seeds and fertilizer. Like we're not talking like bags of fertilizer like the feed store. We're talking about you know little bottles of liquid like personal use, not enough to be commercial by any means in that aspect. Um, and then we sell like bows and. Um, some hunting, uh, like clothing, things like that. Just some stuff that supplements the habitat business a little bit. So, would you do any wildlife regulation on property uh, in the sense of um, wildlife control or anything along those lines? Oh, we don't really, you mean as far as Pest removal or wildlife well, removal? I'm, or I'm just telling you, know, if someone wants to uh, bring turkeys into into their property, that for is, example. That is not really... So <laughs> you're, you're, <laughs> you're not really <laughs> in the, into the wildlife <laughs> habitat. Basically, yeah. picture somebody saying, here, I got 40 acres. I want you to make it the best 40 acres it could possibly be because I want to hunt deer and turkeys and I'll go in there and I'll lay it out for them. And Okay. Either sometimes just build them a plan and they'll do it themselves or, you know, I've got some guys that I do literally everything for them and they just call me and say, hey, I'm going hunting, where do you think I should go? Okay. So. All right. So this building's going to be just, a part of it's going to be retail? So a small part of it is going to be retail. When you walk in the door, I think the floor plan is there. Mm -hmm. If you walk in the door to the right, that area right there will be retail. and. I mean, retail is probably 10 to 15 percent of our business. It's very, very minimal, um, but it, it gets people in the door sometimes, and that's great for our real estate business too. So uh, there will be just a little bit of retail, and then what's going to be there mainly will be his and I office will be there, and then um, we have a team of agents that will be coming in and out, and then clients that will be coming in and out on an infrequent basis. I mean. For us to have for eight the, people for the real estate portion. Yeah, of it. for us to have eight people in the building is probably going to be about it. Yeah. 
So on the, <coughs> you, you've indicated the fertilizer is kind of small quantity, so, so you you won't be storing any product outside the building. No, we not don't. Outside. No, no. Right. none of it is. I don't like my equipment to sit outside. <laughs> and we don't like the product to sit outside because it doesn't spread and it doesn't work as well. I mean, if it gets weather in it, it's usually not not usable anymore. So um, we store most of it at home now, and it's all enclosed. So. So, so product offered for sale is not going to be outside. Um, and then your equipment, say, uh, UTVs, trailers. If it is, it's because it's working hours and we're there moving it around or, you know, we get it setting in the lot for a second. But I think overnight it's going to be. So when you're away, inside. when you're away from premises and business is not open, any of those kinds of things won't be out visible no. to other neighbors. Our insurance much prefers it that way, right? <laughs> <laughs> and no, and then there's no noise factor for this kind of business in that situation. I mean, because you are situated in a library. The most noise we could possibly have is a diesel truck running or a diesel right. tractor running, just loading it up on That's a trailer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, no different than um, the building we're proposing to build. I'm building it tall enough so I can minimize the amount of times I've got to unload stuff. So it's actually going to be tall enough I can leave the equipment <laughs> loaded on the trailer and actually put it in the shop. Because, I mean, that area, you know, you have the library, mm -hmm. no. church, yeah. library, yeah. funeral home, county building, crider, those are all kind of you know, properties yeah. that uh, you totally don't need Totally different kind of business models, we as understand. As far as early morning, you know, I could see, you know, those are the type of days where the day in advance in the evening is when I load things. If I'm going to be leaving out of there at five or six o'clock in the morning, so all I'm doing is opening the door and pulling the truck out. But even so, it's up. it's a tractor or it's the truck. It's no different than the noise that's going to be coming up and down the highway. The truck. And, and your entrance into the property? Is off the road the same as the library. Can you show me up there? Uh, it's right here. Yeah. You can see this is 47, and right. this is that road that comes between the library and the lot. So it actually comes in. Can you go back with Randy? I'm sorry, my head is in the way. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So yeah, that shows it better. Yeah. That's a shared drive going up to the library, and that would be their entrance. So the library's okay. entrance is like down this way. And then and that, but, but it's private, it's not actually a city street, it's just the easement between the properties. I believe yes. it's a private shared ingress mm -hmm. yeah. easement. And you do realize, and I will just tell you from personal experience, that that is the most dangerous intersection in the city of Warrington. <coughs> that, that area there. Yeah. So, yeah. like when you're pulling, when you're, I'm just yeah. telling you that when you're pulling in, if you're pulling in large trailers, mm -hmm. I live right there. Uh, Come and from the other unfortunately, right? and the elderly community lives in that part of the neighborhood. And uh, what community? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you, brother. Uh, so when you so when you start twisting MoDOT, tell them that we need a th third lane. Uh, I'm telling you, this city needs to. I don't know. We need we to address that, that aggressively. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why we don't have a third lane, turn lane on that part. Of this there is a lot of ins and outs, and yeah, it's going to get uh, worse, right? We've been by it several times, different times of the day, just seeing the traffic. And kind of. Some days that it's well, even when I'm making a left, even when I'm making a left, when I'm coming south of 47, I'm making a left in my street, and there's a diesel coming behind me. I don't make the left. I go on up and turn into the Lutheran Church if I can, and if I don't, I go up to the Baptist Church and turn around because that's how dangerous it is there. That, oh. and then when people are coming from the south to the north, pop it over that hill. Mm -hmm. There's a little blind spot. We've had there. several accidents there in the year. I wish I could have started keeping track of them and showed Mo Dot myself, but uh Are you trying to talk them out of <laughs> <laughs> No I just want no I I, I trust appreciate me, I'm, the heads up. I do trust me, I I'm looking forward to I've been wanting a business to go in there for a, a long time. And a quiet business is what I would love to see going there. <laughs> I, mean, uh, I think a quiet business fits that. We won't have a lot. I mean, it's not like, I know it's zoned for retail and we have a little bit of retail, but it's not going to be the ins and outs of, you know, it's it's going to be more of a slow study. There will be a couple of people in well, that kind see, of thing. I could see the family coming to the library, <coughs> the gentleman going over and yeah, not right? being sexist <laughs> or anything like that. I'm just saying, 
The yeah, that's, that, I, think <laughs> I think it's a, I think it's a neat. I like your marketing But what I'm saying is, <laughs> you know, when you're talking about a funeral home and a library and that kind of right. neighborhood, it's got to be a specific type of. Yes. Well, I'm telling the stop while he's still in there. <laughs> <laughs> is he Go ahead, ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, You have the the shade kind of shaded on the east side of the building and the back side of the building. The I take this parking area also are. So that's where, yes, the parking lot looms up there. Um, my truck and trailer together are mm -hmm. roughly about 58, 59 feet long. Okay. That way I can get up in there and be able to back into this building. Well, um, to address part of the parking issue is, could we designate some of that as parking area? Wait, we could. We could uh, place box there, I mean, like an overflow area, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't see an issue with that because I could personally just park my truck there too and stay out the front. Right. I just don't know with this layout, can we get 26 spots in? How many do you have right now? 11. 11. So, and I'm trying to understand on so on, on the parking, the requirement based on the analysis and the size and use of the building is 22 spaces necessary is that and I think Mrs. Scott was getting a question but I, I didn't really I wasn't clear on whether we know for sure <coughs> is the parking requirement based on just 2200 square feet of retail or is it based on the 5500 square foot of the total building and the assumption that it it's a retail building and we're counting all 5,500. How, how is that calculation made? It is based on the total size of the building because it not only will it be part of the retail, they'll be used to, you know, the shop area will actually be part of their business. Right, okay, so, so we're not able to say X amount of the building is, well, so in this case, 2,200 square feet, if, if the numbers that the applicant is using is accurate is the retail side which requires the higher parking level and the other half of the building is say contractors storage which might have a smaller parking if, if the entire building were contractor storage and only contractor storage i'm assuming we wouldn't need 22 spaces correct if it's for his service yes as in my plan review letter for section 405 250 l 7 and 12 um, retail store personal service establishment which i believe is his habitat project any other commercial use except amusement or recreation one parking space for each 250 square feet of building less than 49,999 square feet so basically although he's got three separate entities there it all falls into that same group right and so we've had several conversations and <laughs> I've explained to him my job is specific look at his plan yes or no does it meet code right. I, that's my only answer right that's my job yeah and, and I'm and I don't have the authority to waive parking requirements right and and I I think as a deliberative body we've historically been really reluctant to deviate from the code um, although I think we do sometimes run into situations where um, the space requirements are based probably partly on information on the way business used to be conducted um, maybe sometimes just on what the community next door did um, and maybe we're not always as up to date on not only parking requirements but a lot of other things so and this is a perfect example of a unique <laughs> we don't fit any mold right. you should have seen us trying to figure right. out what um, where we fell we've had, we've had <laughs> plenty of good conversations right. my goal is to help them right which i believe and he has been extremely helpful is true yeah well and, that and i look at code one. and i look at code and i look at code <laughs> and then i still have that sad right. black and white answer well i certainly don't think that by asking any questions we're going to stumble across something you hadn't thought of and I'm not asking the questions because I think that the calculations you've done 
are anything other than conforming to our code is. Um, but I think we run into situations pretty often these days. Um, now that development is coming back to Warrington and we're starting to see some things come forward where, um, I mean, those of us that have been on this commission for very long, I think we'll all agree, we haven't had a whole lot to work on <laughs> um, in the last five years. So uh, I, I'm not sure that all of our ordinances necessarily are as, as current as what conditions in retail and service industries are. And, you know, the, the one part of the business it is personal service or whatever. I mean, I, I think of this building, I think of what the other thing he does somewhat like what I would think of like a finished grading contractor might be, that he's got a small tractor and a bobcat or whatever. And so <clears throat> that part of the building maybe fits that use. And I know we can't do the calculations and say, okay, X, X amount of the building, we're going to calculate off that use and, and off the other. Um, but the thing I'm struggling with is how do we, as a planning and zoning commission, say we love your business plan and we love the fact that you're talking about doing something that, to my knowledge, nobody else in Warrington is offering, um, and yet totally disregard what our ordinances say. That's the hard part, and I think the Board of Aldermen has been the same struggles. Well, I'm just looking at, I take it it's uh, in correction closure. At yeah. the back. Yes. Yeah. You can very easily fit six parking stalls in. We could come up with, yeah, I mean, we could come up with some more. I just, 11 is what we're missing, and I think 11 might be really difficult to put in there. I, I don't I think we're, we're not opposed to creatively coming up with additional parking spots. I, I mean, I, I don't see us ever using the 11 up front. But we can creatively come up with some more, but I just don't think that we're gonna get all 22 of them in there and be viable. I mean, we could we could force it, but it might not look very good. Right. Well, that's, uh, <laughs> that's kind of removed to the back of the yeah. property to where it could be employee parking. Well, and that's well, just us. <laughs> <laughs> so. And the other problem we have is because we've got the two clothing zones back there too. Right. It's going to cut down on parking. That's part of the city requirement too, is we have to have two loading zones. So what does our code say about, you know, if we're looking at this area, maybe this that works, <coughs> I'm going to try not to. <laughs> Apparently it's not working. This one's not working. Anybody have a corner that works? Yeah, yeah, totally. it's it's what is this? Is this a pointer? It is a pointer. pointer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Yeah. 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 Got it. Yeah. So, uh, I've never had that toy. So, you know, this this is the uh, access point onto the parking lot. Obviously, because your your retail space is up here and your building entrance is here, your clients are going to park here mm -hmm. and go in the building here. Mm -hmm. um, all of this rear area, which is the loading, unloading, etc is to the back of the building least likely to be used by your customers. Mm -hmm. um, so Mr. Hand, I don't know if area like this, can it be set up for parking yet uh, and still count as parking, uh, but the building occupant use it as their loading and unloading zone? The, the loading zone area cannot be considered a parking stall because if the trucks there are loading or unloading, obviously you can't have you a can car there. Right. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I think Mr. Gurla pointed out this area here, some directly, uh, some parking that mirrors just like this, three or four spaces there is probably able to be accomplished. And I was thinking uh, parallel spaces along this area here you can fit them, but obviously when you're loading your tractor, you've got your truck and your trailer pulled up and things like that, that space isn't, isn't available. I'm just trying, trying to, to think creatively that. around that issue. We can put the space, like I said, I mean, I don't think we're gonna use them, so we can put them like that and more than likely no one's going to park there so we could still be able to load and unload but then we're just really satisfying the requirements we're not using it as, and, I mean, and and you know <laughs> if that's okay with that's you that's okay with me <laughs> I, I can maybe say things 
that Mr. Hanf otherwise might not be able to say, but you know, our, our code is written based on a set of assumptions and based on the types of businesses that we anticipate might occupy a particular piece of land. And the code is imperfect when it comes to a specific business and how much actual client traffic <coughs> might be there at any given time. So, you know, your business is very probably one where you're not going to have the same amount of foot traffic as a C store. Right. Okay. So, but our code doesn't necessarily differentiate. It just says based on the square footage and the fact that you have some retail space, then 22 right. spaces <laughs> is what you've got to have there. So, um, the problem, and I've, I've been on the commission a long time, Mr. Barton has been on the commission a long time, Mrs. Scott, and I mean, everybody here has got, I think, some considerable experience. And I can't remember any occasions in the close to 15 years I've been on where we've been able to do a workaround. We, we can't just forgive the fact that you don't have the amount of spaces that are required. And we need a solution for that because the Board of Aldermen, I think, will have to wrestle with the same question. Mm -hmm. Well, there's also the factor of you're going to, it's your building, the whole thing, you're going to be using the whole thing, and if you happen to, if, if somebody is parked there, you'll be able to talk to them and tell them, you know, right. can, can you move your vehicle while we, so, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, I, you know, we can I definitely think we could find a way to put them in there. Yeah, I think you could. Um, Just, they won't be as usable as the ones up front, so. But if it if it's obviously a hard sticking point, we'll get creative and we'll get them in there and you know and we'll make it work. And we'll I say think just to help to expedite your process, if we can work with the 22 parking stalls, work with your engineer to get them fit into the sites, I think that's mm -hmm. one of our main sticking points right now. Is are you correct? And I think part of the reason the code is probably written the way it is is because that's the use you have for that building but in that's 10 good. years you right. may sell yeah. that exactly. building and somebody may come in there that with a retail situation that requires more and they're going to have to have that parking or at least the ability to put and it that's there the, uh, so the reason i'm looking to do a cross wall around the entire building instead of just the actual wall of the space so it could be usable so for someone else so. but we'll get we, we can get with the engineer and and try to get creative and see what we think. Well, that would also allow some time to address a couple of the other things that <coughs> really are open-ended right now with regard to the landscaping and, the land, yeah. and things like that. Because I won't say we've never ever said we recommend approval subject to the following unanswered questions being answered by the time it gets to the Board of Aldermen. <coughs> but up to a certain degree. We're punting our responsibility to that. I <laughs> think that. the landscape, I thought the landscape was done. I he did not get it complete. Okay. You have the visual one, not the one that says surface area. Okay. And then um, I just, we don't know. MoDOT is going to be our big hold up with that. Getting that MoDOT information, they're telling well, us, could take six to eight weeks. So the connection to the mode out you're going to have to have complete construction documents and mm -hmm. right so you're not going to have construction documents we won't have that so can we come back with the stormwater management minus that part because yeah, I, mean, I mean we won't have construction you, plans to you, come you back can't begin con you, even if we and the board of aldermen give all the blessings that you right. need you wouldn't begin any kind of construction until you had the blessing from MoDOT that you could actually get mm -hmm. in and out. Right. So yeah, and that would be your plans for that. Yeah, for I and, and I think your financing will get out of until that's approved too, if you had financing. And, um, and it sounds consider. like you're still contingent up on what the library is going to look like too before it's well, all Well, I mean, we'd like to see what the library is going to play out to look like. Yeah, just so visually it, it sure. all flows together. You don't exactly. want it to make it look like, you know, because the parking lot is already kind of separate from the light. It's already going to be visually awkward for everyone, I think, anyways, because the parking lot's over here. So if we could make that flow to just make it yeah. a little bit more visually aesthetic, I think that that would be good for everybody. So, um, The library's uh, detention basin is right along is the right, top. Is right, you're right. So we'll yeah. probably end up right with some right. trees back that way a little bit with the detention pond. Um, just, again, visually. That was be. one of my questions. There's five that go, that need to go along 47. Is that correct? The yeah five street trees are required and four parking lot trees are required. So, so you have a total of nine. 
is there a specific type of parking lot tree you want or in an area you want? It's in the section of code. They got this okay. up. They can figure it out. In the landscape section. Okay. And so my last question would be, um, I mean, we could force to a vote on this, but I think there are so many unanswered questions it would be difficult for us to make a solid recommendation. Right. So our other course of action would be to table this to give you time to go back and answer all of the other questions and address the parking concerns and things of that nature. We've had all the other discussions so that if you came back to us with these other questions answered, it would hopefully be something that we could get okay. completed without a lot of additional time. So stormwater management, landscape, plan, and parking spots. Right. Get that worked out, come back. And we so we, we, we would suggest just to table the consideration until you were able to get those other things pulled together if that is um, preferable to you than trying to push it forward without all these questions answered. Well, it sounds like it'll probably be better in our, on our end of it if we do that. So let's get the answers for you guys and then right. we could do that. February 1st is the next P and Z meeting. So it is on the schedule, sir. Mm. Well, I would uh, make a motion that we table consideration of the uh, extreme real estate site plan 121 uh, until the meeting so that they can work through the other issues. And then the conditional use we can go for the project. I'll second that. So then motion by Mr. Costello and second by Mr. Deitch to table this until the February 1st meeting. Any questions or comments? Roll call vote. Mr. Cullum? Yes. Mrs. Scott? Yes. Mr. Barton? Yes. Mr. Durbin? Yes. Mr. Gerloff? Yes. Mrs. Blondin? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Costello? Yes. Mr. Deach? Yes. Motion passes 9 0 with one absent. And so what are we going to do with the book? Let's go ahead and go through the conditional use permit. We're going to table that as well. It would be up to you and the applicants if they want to table that also. Or I mean, we can't really vote on the conditional use if we don't have an approved site exactly. plan. So, I mean, I would make the same motion to uh, table <coughs> consideration of the CUP 56 until the February meeting. Second. Y'all are okay with that, correct? Yes. Yeah. Motion by Mr. Costello, second by Mr. Deach to table the conditional use permit as well. Any questions or comments? Let's all vote. Mrs. Scott? Yes. Mr. Barton? Yes. Mr. Durbin? Yes. Mr. Gerloff? Yes. Mrs. Blondin? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Costello? Yes. Mr. Deach? Yes. Mr. Cullum? Yes. Motion passes 9 0 with one absent. And we appreciate your. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Hope it works out. Yep. So thank you. Close the meeting and turn it over to Mr. Hamp. We know he has something on February 1st, maybe. <laughs> yes, we do. <did. laughs> the other exciting thing, like the gentleman from Snooks pointed out, they, are, they have started clearing some of the marketable timber over at the Snooks site. I saw that. And hopefully, going on the bulk grading and clearing here real shortly. Cool. Any other things going on? This seems like the spirit business is the liquor store down here has been doing quite. I don't know if there's any there's concerns down here, but yeah, they I just like, had I like the, uh, the building. They just had the ribbon cutting okay. last Friday. Mm -hmm. Definitely seem to have lots of selection in there. It, uh, so it's, 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 it's a nice building. It's a nice building. Yeah. It's a nice building. So, some friends of mine are really happy busy. about the cigar session. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Seems to be. Yeah. Any other questions for Mr. Hampton this time? The cigar eyes. Any other motion to adjourn? Mr. D, second by Second. Scott, all in favor say aye. Aye. Happy New Year.